Dr. Oz, I really need your help. Because the doctors here are tripping over their own dicks trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with me. Get this. A year, a year or so ago, Dr. Dumas, I complained to him about what I thought was a pulled muscle. Because the, the pulled muscles right here, my chest, the burning in my groin, the strain in my muscles, groin muscles, and a gnawing in my muscle right here. And I told him what I thought, and, he, and I mentioned, well, what could it be? It couldn't be acid reflux. In fact. There, that's it. That's what it is. And yet, I had just had an endoscopy done. All I said was that I had minor irritation down in the stomach. And it never did anything after that to correct it. And he, wanted, he said, let's get you an endoscopy. I'm like, you already did that. Oh, we already did? And, and not that, but I was on dial at H. No, not dial, but I was on Prevacid. And that was taking care of my acid reflux problems. Or, or as my mom says, a stomach that produces too much acid. But I'm not even sure it's acid reflux. All I know is if I don't take these fucking pills, I get a burning in my stomach that I'd rather kill myself than live with. Uh, fuck that. I'll kill myself if I live with that burning in my stomach. Got so bad one time, before, right before I started taking Prilosec and in October 1998, I actually threw up because the acid was actually overflowing. I came out of my apartment at, at Coleman Drive and threw up on the sidewalks and on the grass. I didn't give a fuck if people saw me. Hey. And that same day, Dr. Dumas, back in 1998, put me on Prilosec. And then he switched it over to Prevacid shortly after that. Okay, that being said, he says it's acid reflux. Okay, well, guess what the fuck happened? Sunday night, I went to, I ate a triple chocolate dessert at Applebee's, and a friend of mine gave me this, some mozzarella sticks. I cringe thinking about those things. I want to puke thinking about those mozzarella sticks. I don't, I don't know, I got sick. I came home that night, also ate me a yogurt, and I felt a feeling of unpleasant fullness in my gut around 2 o'clock. Went to bed, could not fall asleep because of unpleasantness in my stomach. Got up the next morning, 7, could not sleep, feeling nauseated. Well, over the next few hours, twice, I felt as though I was going to throw up. You know, when right before you throw up, that awful feeling, that nausea feeling, went to the bathroom. All I did was dry heave, and yet my stomach felt like it was full of crap. Well, that vomit. I could not vomit it up. I kept putting my finger in my throat trying to vomit it up. Finally, the second time I vomited a few uh, hours or later, uh, I vomited up a spoonful of vomit. But that's all. And later that day, I saw feeling this awful cramp and gnawing in my stomach. And I thought it was because I was unable to get the virus, the vomit, the virus out. It was starting to really hurt me. And, okay, that was Tuesday, all day long, and all night long, I didn't get I hardly any sleep Tuesday night. I felt a cross between a cramping that would flare up every five or ten minutes, right here, between a cramping and a gnawing in my gut. You, I could actually press my finger in it, and it hurt. It still, it still, ow. It hurts now to press my finger in it. Now, although it's getting better, knock on wood. It got so bad that I, if I was walking, every time I put my foot down, it hurt. I went to the doctor today, and he, guess what he told me? He thinks it's a pulled muscle. He doesn't think it's acid reflux. What the fuck am I supposed to do when doctors are tripping over their own dicks trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with me? Dr. Oz, can you please save me, help me? Can you please? The only other way I I can relieve myself of these pains is to fucking kill myself. And I don't want to do that. I got things I got to do in this life. Which is passing me by. Can't even get my fucking songs heard. 
everyone. Help me, Dr. Oz, please. I got to give you a reason to help me because it's all about, you know, the shows you got. When I, if I came on your show, it would have to be something that interested your audience. It's, it's not about just helping one person, it's about ratings. It's a show, just like the Oprah Winfrey show. Well, either way, I sell my soul to the devil for complete healing of all these pains to live a life absolutely free of pain and to be transformed into that smoking hot young not so much as even one day over 23 or 19 if possible looking boyish guy perpetually smoking hot to all the top notch girls past present and future to all the girls that I want to think are hot and to all the girls that I would have wanted to think I was hot and to all the girls that I would want to think I'm hot and to get those longer arms, yes, Dr. Oz. I love it when a girl has long arms. I love it. But the turn on is, if my forearms are longer than her forearms, guess what the fuck what? Girls, five foot seven, you have long forearms as long as, or longer than mine. Can you believe that fucking shit? And I sell my soul to the devil for, to get those long forearms. And for them to be just as good as they are now. Not even better. In other words, not muscle damage, not nerve damage, and all that eating, all that shit. And become a superstar, famous performer, rapper, singer, rocker. With my own songs, rocking the world. Like I want it to be done. And to own the house at 1410 Fargate Road with all the trees intact, remaining intact forever. And the, the, become the owner of the trails. And for my children to become a haunted place. A world away from this world. With the trees remaining intact, safe from hurricanes and everything I, else, and everyone else. I saw my soul for this. Because God, what have you done? For, I know you've done a lot of things for me in the past. I know you've done a lot of things for people. But what have you done lately besides sitting your ass on the throne? Just sitting there relaxing while the rest of us suffer or dying down here? Look at my mom. I'm so sick and I curse you for her pain. I look at the pains she's enduring. At 50 fucking years old, 54 to be exact, when my grandparents were 54, they were carefree and happy. They didn't have this shit. They didn't have this acid reflux. Let me tell you something. You let me find out there's something in the water, and I will sue somebody. There ain't no sense. Well, it's like this. The 80s and 70s and even the 90s were glorious decades. These decades today look and smell like a fucking goddamn holy ghost shit heap. Goddamn fuck god dick shit mother dick of goddamn bank. They're talking about acid reflux. People never had this problem back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. What the fuck are they having it today? Come on, something's weakening the muscles. We live in a society of stupid people, a moron, a, a society that's lost its intelligence in this day and age of super advanced technology. It's like, how many morons does it take to put in a fucking light bulb in the fucking light socket? 5,000. One to hold the fucking light bulb, and 4,999 to turn the fucking house around until it fits. You get the fucking picture. Fucking moron. I just got up. As I, you know, and as I, before I was about to get out of bed, I started feeling that goddamn discomforted feeling. I don't know if it's a cramp. Sometimes it can feel like a gnawing. Now it's right here. That Dr. Igbal said was probably pulled muscle, but and yeah, I take what is what is God fucking damn it. A Dexalon, which is 60 milligrams, I think. Yeah. A lot stronger than those omeprazoles, and I think it's starting to go away the pain. You goddamn son of a bitch, get your fucking ass up there. You know, the problem is these doctors, 
Dr. Doom, from Dr. Doomish to Dr. Igbal, they just don't take the time to listen to me. They're, they're always hurrying me up because they got to get the next patient in there and get their money because they're taking patients on Medicaid, Medicare. So you get the bottom of the barrel because they get the bottom of the barrel patients. You go in there and you're the only young person there. They're not going to take the time to listen to you like Dr. Fogelman did, my family doctor, before I was on Medicaid, Medicare. And then when I got on Medicaid, Medicare, I was forced to go to these other doctors. Because the good doctors, they don't afford, they don't take people on Medicaid, Medicare. Because you're going to get the old people with one foot in the grave. These doctors do not take time to listen. While I'm dying here, slowly, they're just taking milk of me for as much money as they can. And Satan, I sell my soul to you for perfect health and to be the smokingly hot, smoking hot good looking guy. Young looking, not so much as one over 19, or not so much as one over 23. And for the long arms, the house at 1410 Fargate Road, and the trails with all the trees intact at my house at Fargate Road, for my trails and the haunt of the house to become, for my trails, you know, all those things too. I so much, and to be perfectly athletic again, without the slant or weakness on the right side of my body. I saw my soul and be absolutely pain free. I forgot to mention, since yesterday I've had a, this, real, this real bad burning on the left side of my groin. Dr. Oz, can you help me? Because if you won't, I'm seriously thinking about killing myself. I, ain't gonna, I, I do not want, unless I saw my soul to you, Satan, do not want to kill myself and do not. Because I have it so good up here, and get all the things I mentioned to you, all of them. Yes.